useful for many workers throughout the world and were actually developed to help aid doctors through tough deliveries, but soon became one of the world's fastest ways to cut wood. Every year there are over 165,000 chainsaw related injuries in the United States alone, with the majority of them being almost 100% wood. There are two types of chainsaws, or chainsaw accents, clippings and crunchings. Both would be less than favorable, but most people would prefer a clipping over a crunching. Although these two types of accidents are most common, there have been cases where an operator has been burned from the hot exhaust, even in some extreme cases, people have caught on fire due to the extreme heat and gas vapor collected on clothing. A clipping is where the saw either kicks back or saws through the material and comes in contact with whoever is operating the saw, leaving a laceration. A kickback is a term to describe when the chain bites into the wood and sends the saw jumping back towards the operator. Most kickbacks occur within one, uh, yeah, one tenth of a second, faster than the human mind and body can respond. Most injuries that occur while working a chainsaw are clippings that affect the operator from the hands down. And most of these can be avoided by paying attention and using a sharp chain. A crunching usually tends to be far more fatal than a clipping. A crunching is when a tree limb branch or a tree trunk falls and lands on somebody. More often than not, crunchings are life-threatening due to the weight of the material falling, fall height, and that the material usually falls and lands on the head or neck of the person underneath. If a person is lucky enough to survive a crunching, they are usually hospitalized and veteran for many months after the accident, usually resulting in some sort of physical disability afterwards. When running a chainsaw, there are a few precautions that should be taken to reduce the risk of injury, such as safety glasses, hearing protection, and depending on what you're cutting, you might even want some gloves. Having proper protective equipment is important when running any sort of tool or machinery, and a chainsaw is no exception. When people are constantly running saws and getting paid to do it, a lot of employers will require helmets and masks to help protect the operator. The reason for this is because a man, age 27, suffered an allergic reaction when a chip of old wood got lodged in his eye and had an extreme allergic reaction. He had removed the safety glasses because they had fogged up and become an annoyance, even inconvenient. There are a few different types of chainsaws ranging from all sorts of different power capabilities and cutting force. Most, the most powerful type of saw would be the cement saw, usually used by mason workers for cutting cement and bricks. The second most powerful saw would be the standard gas-powered saw used to cut wood. These also range in a variety of power, but are most, but for the most part, are all efficient and more efficient than the electric saw. Electric chainsaws are usually used by the average homeowner, whether it be corded or battery operated. You won't see an electric chainsaw used by big companies or even on most farms. Mainly because the electric saws don't have the cutting force that most workers are looking for. There's also what is known as a pole saw. A pole saw is a is used to cut it in trim tree branches that are high off the ground. These pieces of machinery usually aren't too big in size, but are handy when looking to cut something on a tree that is high off the ground. A lot of injuries can be avoided from happening when running a chainsaw if you take proper care of the chainsaw when you are not running it. Always make sure you have a sharp chain when cutting the chain, or when cutting with a dull chain, you tend to try to force the cut and apply too much pressure, just like cutting with a dull knife. Another great, or another general maintenance tip would be to make sure that your bar is always properly oiled. Not oiling your bar and chain can result in a possible warpage of the chain and possibly even catching the wood on fire. Running a chainsaw can be a very dangerous task, but when done, but when done incorrectly, or a chainsaw can be a very dangerous task when done incorrectly. While there is no such thing as an injury-free chainsaw, you can severely reduce the risk of injury by taking a few precautions and steps to protect yourself, paying attention, and keeping your equipment properly maintained through its life.